All right, you guys, a lot of you have been asking about these large mirrors I have sitting in my house and asking how I put them together. So today I will be showing you how to build one all on your own. It's super easy. I'll take you step by step. So let's get started. looks like these are closet mirrors you can find these closet mirrors in your house or Facebook market and they're cheap you can get them close to nothing um, I got these for free so find yourself a closet mirror you can find it <laughs> anywhere stop <laughs> that looks hilarious if you like a yeah yeah <laughs> We are just gonna throw away the skeleton that was wrapped around this mirror and build a new and greater. <laughs> I think I've changed this mirror out a couple times, you know? Yeah. Not really happy with the trim. What I really like about having big mirrors in your home, it makes your room feel larger. Looking at this wall when the mirror is off, I feel like it's all of a sudden closing in on us because the mirror helped give it like another door to another dimension. Okay, the first step, I'm gonna gather all the materials I need, all the tools we're gonna be using. I'll let you know measurements and what you need to build your own mirror. Okay, the materials you will need for the frame are three two by eight by eight, three one by three by eight, stain is optional, and then you're gonna need one sheet of plywood. I like to take the mirror and just measure everything off of the mirror. So obviously closet mirrors might come in different sizes. So just check your mirror to make sure what size it is and then go off your mirror measurements. So I'm gonna take my pieces of wood and I'm going to go in just one inch on all sides because that's the ledge that the mirror is going to use to support against. There are many different ways that you can frame your mirror. One would be having the top piece, the top middle piece, overlapping both of those. Or you can do your cuts at an angle. I wanna try something a little bit more simpler, easy to put together, so that's why I'm going with the straight cuts. All right, now that we have all the measurements for our wood, we're gonna take the wood outside and get it cut. all my wood cuts. I have them laid out because I'm gonna start staining them. I did select this wood because of all the knots and the beat up look, cause I want to have it to, I want it to look like a aged frame. So I might beat it up a little bit more, but as you can see, I wanted to have all these knots right here and then a little bit of this destroyed. I might take a hammer to it and beat it up a little bit more. Um, but once I get staining, it'll start giving it a really cool character and aged look because I want to do more of a farmhouse style. A lot of people use a paintbrush to put stain on, but I like to have a rag. It gives it a nice clean finish and a nice uh, layer. It doesn't put too much on your wood. So let's get staining. We are going to attach the wood together by using these L brackets. 
These are old, I have had them laying around, so I thought it'd be nice to use these. Um, if you don't have an L bracket to attach your wood, you can just screw screws in this way and that'll hold your wood together. And to hold your mirror in place so it doesn't slide, you could just take a screw and screw right here and that would help your mirror from sliding too. But to save on extra time, this will do everything. This will keep your mirror from sliding and it will attach your wood together as extra support. But remember, we have the plywood, which is gonna go on top and that's gonna be the extra, extra support. And then we even have these. So if this looks kind of wimpy to you, we got a lot more to hold it together. So now we're just going to add all these L brackets and yeah. <laughs> Now that we have the brackets in place holding the wood together and the mirror so the mirror doesn't slide, we are gonna add the plywood to the back to give it that extra structure and keep it, um, you know, hold it in place. <laughs> now we just have to screw all the sides and secure it into place. Let's see, was it, did you get it? Well, it was about half an inch. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, it's the back, and it's just holding it together. So we are gonna try to make it as nice as possible, but just throw it on, screw it in, and let's move on to the next, which is the trim around the frame. We're gonna put that on, then we're gonna stain it. So I'm kinda excited about that part because I, use my, I get to use my nail gun. My nail gun. <laughs> the whole project can, can be done with a drill I wouldn't recommend a screwdriver, but if you want to, you can use a hammer and nails. Yeah, just make new holes if you have to. These screws are not that long at all. All you need is enough screw to go through the plywood and a little bit through the wood. And you can put as much on as you want. I think we do three on this end, four on the longer end. Um, and yeah, it just gives it extra security. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, it's already, it, it could be done like this. If you guys want to finish it like this, then go ahead. We are just going to add some trim around it just to give it a little extra texture. But honestly, this could be the end for you guys. <laughs> okay. Now we are attaching the bracket that this whole mirror is going to be sitting on. Um, you want to measure. Um, from the top of your wood. Don't worry about this plywood because it could be crooked. So just go off the top of this and that will make it level. Um, if you guys haven't seen these, these are awesome. I use these for all of my heavy wall art. Um, I think it can hold up to 300 pounds, but basically this one is kind of like the same as the one up there, but it's the opposite of this one. So what it's gonna do is the one on the wall is like this and the one on the mirror is like this, and you slide it into each other, and it connects, and then there's no way it can fall off, because it's a heavy mirror. I mean, yeah. how heavy do you think this mirror is? I don't know, but it's a very secure bracket. Yeah, literally 300 pounds or more. These are amazing. Just get it in a stud. Do not yeah. put it in your drywall with some kind of um, anchor anchor <laughs> because those anchors do not work get yeah. it in a stud and it will hold a huge mirror like this easily um, But we'll show you we'll show the We'll show you how we put this on because I know this is usually a tricky part that is confusing for people and they want to know how you got it on the wall Why not one more? There you go Okay, so we are not putting it on the wall just yet because we are going to do our trim, our border. I don't think Mike's totally on board with this idea, but I think it's gonna look really good. Like we said before, you can just put it up on the wall like it is, but I haven't done this yet. One and it's a step. new, it's a, a new look for me and I wanna give it a try. So yeah, we're gonna put the trim on and then stain the trim after that. And then it'll be ready to go on the wall. <laughs> It looks like it's not bracketed very well. What is going on? Yeah. We're gonna anchor this down a little better. We're seeing that it's just a little, it's moving just a little bit, Wait, move it. which is more than we want right It just there. has a little bit of give, and yes. we don't want that. So Mike is gonna countersink um, 
a pre-drilled hole for yeah. us. Yeah, it's, it's this. It kind of just helps you guide your screw yes. instead of kind of just winging it. So right. we just don't want the screw to show. So it really gives it a nice look if you pre-drill your holes. All right. All right, there you go. That's better. So Mike is just gonna add that to the rest. I mean, just do three more, I guess. Yeah. So now that you know what a countersink is, um, I have a little story I wanna tell you guys. I went to the store and I was getting a countersink for the first time and I didn't know where to find them, so I asked for help. And I said, okay, do you guys have any countersinks? Um, where would I find one? And they're like, oh yeah, it's in the very back. You'll find it by all the toilets and stuff. I was like, that's a weird spot to put like some kind of drill bit. I was like, okay. I go walking all the way to the back of the store and there I find a bunch of counter sinks, but they're counter sinks. Like you turn the water on, you turn the faucet on and they're counter sinks. I just started laughing. I was like, he totally thought I meant like a kitchen sink, not a drill bit. So I end up going off on my own and finding it myself. But I thought it was kind of funny because it does sound like a counter sink. <laughs> if you think it is. It is. It's the same thing. But yeah, your robotic better. fingers. Yeah, in the I way. recommend. I recommend getting a screw on these two pieces in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Now it's not. It doesn't have that wobble. Yeah. Okay, so Mike just wanted to clarify that he was right. It needed those screws because I said, nah, we don't need those. <laughs> so that's what he was trying to say there. <laughs> <laughs> let's jump through it. Yeah, let's jump in it. All right, you guys, next step, we have all of our cuts and we're just going to be using Savannah's nail gun. Um, you can use nails or even screws, but we just didn't want it too obvious that we had screws on all the sides of this mirror. So the nails are a little smaller with the nail gun. All right, Savannah, are you gonna leave that like that? No, I mean, it does look amazing as is, but we will finish staining the trim around the mirror. <laughs> what was that? I don't know, I couldn't think of what it was. So we're gonna take it outside, haul this giant mirror out there, stain it, finish it, and then throw it on the wall. up on the measurements. First off, look at this large mirror. I mean, have you seen anything so magnificent? All right, hold on. No, hold on, look hold at on, this. Hold on. We cannot fit it on our wall. It is on the floor. Okay, so yes, it was my fault. So I totally thought that our wood was this width. Like, I was like, yeah, that looks like our wood. There's no way. But in reality, it's almost double of what this is. Oh my goodness. Oh my word. So our original wood for the mirror is so much smaller and I got, I thought I got the right wood. So instead of putting it on the wall, we are gonna have a floor mirror. And you know what? I've always wanted a floor mirror. Oh, really? Well, yes. this sure works out for you then. <laughs> okay, so you guys might 
um, be freaking out a little bit because if this falls on anybody, it um, cause some damage. <laughs> so we are going to attach it to the wall still with strong reinforcements. Yeah, so they have like really thick wires and stuff that you can attach to the, yeah. the wall. So you know how like you attach your stove or your dresser to the wall or so that if kids or someone like pulls on it, it won't fall on anybody? Yeah. So we're gonna do some crazy reinforcements to the mirror, but it will be a floor mirror, which is okay because I love floor mirrors. I really do. You know, I think she had this plan the whole time, you guys. <laughs> You know, it worked out. It worked out good. I mean, so, this thing's like touching the ceiling already. It I, is. I knew something was. Dude, you know I what? Think it's like eight feet. Make sure you measure from floor to ceiling, and then measure your mirror. You would think you'd do that first, but. Yeah, but the only reason I didn't do that first is because I thought these were the exact pieces we had on the original mirror. So I thought we were completely good. And we weren't. <laughs> Zoom in on some of the stuff. You I did. took You're a like hammer. What the back side of a hammer, and it looks like a rabbit. <laughs> it looks like rabbit print. <laughs> rabbit teeth. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then like, like a bear, like just scratched down that. I did. I totally just clawed it with a knife. <laughs> and this thing, a bunch of animals have been all over. <laughs> <laughs> I just Six wanted it look like it was beat up a little bit, you know? Yeah. I mean. I, mean, I like it though. It looks like it belongs in a cabin. I just can't so believe awesome. that this was just the closet mirror and you can turn it into yes. something like this. We hope you just have a good idea of what you can do. Um, for the cost of this, the whatever size these boards are, Savannah, <laughs> they were $12 each. She got three of them, so that's $36. It was $12 for the trim total, which was three boards for $4 each. Yeah. The stain was $5, so that's $53. So plywood on top of that, and then whatever you can get the mirror for, whether it's free or, I don't know what mirrors go for online. Dude, free. this thing is heavy. I feel like I we have some California redwoods in our house. I know. <laughs> that was a super fun project, but I think it worked out pretty well. I got my large mirror. <laughs> I tricked you. It's actually a floor mirror. <laughs> you trick me. All right, you guys, well, we hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know if you're thinking about making one of these things, and if you do, yeah. please let us know how it goes. Yep. And if you guys could not forget to push that like button for this, no. for this guy. No, take it. <laughs> no. <laughs> sure, wait, I want to show taking it out of this thing, though. I want to show taking it out. <laughs>